Hello everyone, welcome to chemistry. This is unit one. This is our first lecture. Uh, we'll be talking about measurement standards. We'll be talking about unit conversions and I'll be doing some examples. But I want to start off with what's probably the most, uh, the first unit of measurement you can think of. Um, well, first unit of measurement that comes to mind that I think of is the foot. The foot. Any guess why you think it's called the foot? By the way, the foot today is what's called 12 inches and it has a very specific length. Why do you think they call it the foot? Yes, you're right, because it literally is the measure of the length of someone's foot. It was a very standard unit of measurement back in the day, and it still is. It's a practical unit of measurement. If you want to measure the length of your room, you'd probably measure it in, in feet, not miles or inches. Um, so the foot has changed in length depending on time. Uh, we had at one point a unit called the Roman foot, and that was literally the length of uh, someone's foot in Rome, and they used that as a standard of measurement for quite a long time. The Anglo-Saxons changed that, and I don't think we adopted the standard length of the foot until the 1600s. Don't quote me on that. Anyways, we all know you could pick up any ruler today measured in inches and in any ruler uh, that's one foot in length is going to be the same hopefully as a ruler in the next classroom in the next town city country across the other side of the world everywhere in the world one foot is exactly the same unit of measurement it's exactly the same length uh, today anymore we've kind of switched gears we don't necessarily use english units of feet or ounces uh, we've switched gears to the metric system, and, and, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. You've seen this type of stuff before. The type of units we use today are called SI units, and this is French for System International, and it's in the, based on the two, sorry, the three base units. For mass, we have kilograms. For length, we have the meter, and for time, we have the seconds. All other units can be based or derived from these three base units. Does that mean ounces or grams or pounds are not an acceptable unit of mass? Well, they are. It's not what we're going to use. It's not what to use in the current scientific world, and it's frankly, it's not what we're going to use in this class. Um, the measurement standard uh, of mass and length and time are, are set on today's standards. So this is my favorite quotes. How long is a meter? Well, everyone who's ever picked up a meter stick knows that probably on the back side of it's also a yardstick. A meter is a little bit bigger than one yard. So it's greater than 36 inches. This is my favorite quote about the meter. The meter was originally defined in 1793. It's one ten millionth of the distance between the equator to the North Pole. In 1889, it was redefined in terms of the prototype meter bar, blah, 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 blah. And it is now defined as a certain number of wavelengths of a certain emission line of Krypton-86. Uh, that's a quote I pulled directly from Wikipedia. Um, suffice to say, I don't want to spend a whole lot, a whole lot more time talking about, talking about units. Okay, what we will spend some time talking about, very briefly, is metric conversions. Now, I know you have all seen this before. You have all converted between kilo, hecta, deca, the base units, deci, centi, and milli. You've all done this before. I am not going to spend time talking about this. I will give you these notes, and you can take a look at this. Um, there are some base units that we use all the time. I like to use units of, wait for it, I like to use units of meters, centimeters, kilometers, millimeters. I like to use mass units of milligrams, grams, kilograms. I like to use volume units of milliliters, liters, cubic centimeters, that's a cube, and then we will eventually get into cubic meters. But those are the metric units I use. Are there, can I have a hectoliter? Can I have a centigram? Sure. But those aren't the ones that we're going to be using in class. Now everyone knows, you've seen this before, I'm going to hold you to this. If you want to convert from one unit to another, we're talking about multiplying or dividing by powers of 10. For example, if I have a unit of, let's pick something friendly. Let's say I have a unit of one kilometer, 
and I want to, even though I'm, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time doing this in class, I want to convert that to a unit of a hectometer. And a hectometer is, would be this, there's going to be some number of hectometers to go from here to here. If I'm going in this direction, I have to follow the rule down here. I have to multiply by 10. So if I have one kilometer, that basically is saying that's equivalent to 10 hectometers. If I want to convert a hectometer to a decameter, I have to multiply it by 10. So this is equal to 100 decameters. And if I want to go all the way to our friendly unit of the meter, I have to multiply by 10 again. So that one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. Now, you could keep going with this. You can go to centimeters, uh, millimeters, and so on. Um, like I said, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time with this. Okay, so. That being said, I'm going to stop that right in there. If I find that we need more help on this in class, we'll, we'll certainly spend some more time on it. But right now, I want to go and, and start talking about unit conversions. OK, now, you have probably done unit conversions at some point in the past, but we will spend some time doing this. And I want to do a couple examples. Now, over on the right, I have a table. And this is just a table that I grabbed quick from the internet. And it has a bunch of basic length and mass, pressure, energy conversions. It even has some temperature conversions on here. And I have a second lecture dealing with that. But let's, let's do a unit conversion. I'm going to show you my way of doing a unit conversion. OK? And let's say I want to take a rather, let's, I just don't know why. I have the number 15 popping up in my head. So let's say 15, uh, let's just say 15 meters. And I want to convert that to the unit of inches. All right. Now, I don't know the conversion in my head. I know about how many inches are in one meter. There's a little bit over 36. So I could kind of get a ballpark answer, but we're not interested in ballpark answers right now. So I kind of, to do this process, I have to, I have to know something between meters and inches. I have to know something. And you, I'm not saying you have to memorize, and I'm never going to make anyone memorize unit conversions, but I have to be able to go over and look at this chart and see if I can find something that can help me get from meters to inches. Now, you might not find a direct meters to inches conversions. Let's see, the closest one I think we have here is centimeters to inches or inches to centimeters, the one directly above it. That's the closest one. So what does this mean? We can't do the problem? Well, don't worry. We can do the problem. All right. The problem is we might have to, somewhere in the middle here, do a metric to metric conversion, like converting meters to centimeters somewhere in the problem. All right, so anyway, so let's start off. Let me do this problem. And when I do a unit conversion problem, I always take whatever I'm given I like to write things over again if you can't haven't figured that out. And I like to put it over one, and I say this is just for fun. Any number put over one is the same number. 15 over one is 15. And this is in meters, and you will become familiar with the types of units and the abbreviations we use for units. M stands for meters, not miles or, or Monday or whatever. Now I actually have to multiply this. My goal here is to get rid of this unit. I am trying to get rid of the meter. I am trying to cancel it out. And to cancel out a unit, I have to take up. Oh, that was the bell going off. I have to. This is a math problem. Let's face it. We're talking about fractions. And even though this is a, a, a letter, it's still part of this equation. I have to divide it away. And the only way I can divide it away is, is, is if I put something in the other side. I have to have meters down here on the other side. Now, because I don't have a conversion directly from meters to inches, I need to go. I need to have an intermediate, and we know that the intermediate has got to be centimeters. So, I've got to have a centimeters to meters conversion. Now, I happen to know that there are 100 centimeters in a meter. Do I expect you to know that? You know, I'm not going to hold hold your feet in the fire over that, but. You know, at some point, it is going to help you just to know a couple metric conversions. Now, that's just not just 100 centimeters over whatever. That's specifically 100 centimeters per one meter. Now, the reason this works is the following. I have, if I do this process, I have a variable basically over a variable. 
meters over meters. Meters over meters will cancel each other out. This is numerator if you forgot. This is denominator. If I multiplied everything here to the, together, I would have meters over meters. Meters over meters cancels out just like 5 over 5 would cancel out. All right, so this process works. Okay, one more thing. This is not cross multiplication. The only time this would be a cross multiplication is if there was an equal sign in between him. And you do not see an equal sign here. So cross multiplication, my friends, is out. All right? Cross multiplication is out. You are not cross multiplying here. You are multiplying. In fact, you are multiplying top times top. And then you're going bottom times bottom. And you're going to take whatever you have left and then divide the two to get an answer. Now, this isn't math class. We're not leaving a fraction in here as our answer. So to do this process, uh, I've got to do 15 times 100. And I'm just going to write this out right now just because I can. A lot of you have probably done this in your head. 15 over 100 divided by 1 times 1, which is pretty much 1. Uh, so our answer here is going to be 15 times 100 is 1,500 over 1. So our answer is going to be 1,500 well, what? What's my what's my unit? Well, it's the only unit that's left here. The only unit left is centimeters. So that is what my answer has got to be. Okay. All right. So let's try another problem. Okay. Let's try this problem. For some reason, I have the number 15 stuck in my head. So let's let's keep the number 15. But now let's change it to a rate. And I understand that we don't necessarily use rates in chemistry, but we're going to use a rate here. And I want to use the rate. 15 miles per hour and let's convert that let's pretend you are moving to Europe and guess what they don't use miles per hour anymore they use this unit they use a unit kilometers per hour all right now I have to convert miles to kilometers now when I when I do this conversion you may some of you may notice that there is a conversion over here directly between kilometers and miles but we'll get there in a second when I write a rate conversion I don't leave it like this I actually change this a little bit I'll take my 15, but MPH is really miles per hour. So I have the abbreviation miles, and I divide it. Now, I always like, remember, I always like to put it in the formula something over 1 just for fun. And you might be saying, where the heck is this a 1? Where's the 1? Well, this is 15 miles per hour. And it's not just any hour. It's 15 miles per 1 hour. So I still have the same format, put a number over 1 just for fun. And now the only unit I'm looking to change here is the miles. The hours is going to stay the same. So I come over here and I look at my chart, and I have kilometers in you know, so many miles. Now the question is, where is the kilometer going to go? Is the kilometer, do I put the one kilometer down here, and do I put the miles up top? Is that going to help me cancel the unit of miles? Does miles cancel with kilometers down here? Uh, no. So I have to move this around. I have to erase some things here. In fact, my conversion is not um, my conversion is going to be 0.621 and I'm just going to leave it as 0.621 right now. 0.621 and that is miles. Now you don't necessarily have to put the zero out in front here. You'll find that I leave those out quite frequently and that is per one kilometer. Now, if I come check the unit conversion, I am canceling a unit that is top over bottom. So miles cancels. The only unit I have left up top is kilometer, and the unit I have left on the bottom is hours. So my units of kilometers per hour stay. Um, now the math problem. Well, remember, it's top times top. This is going to be equal to 15 times 1 over 1 times 0.621. Well, you can probably figure out the 15 times 1 part. So we're really looking at 15 over 0.621, and now I have to break out the calculator. And the magic of calculators gives me an answer of 24.2. And remember our units, kilometers per hour. So if you go to Europe, you now know how much your velocity will have changed. Okay, that completes our lesson on unit conversions and standards. Remember, we're really focusing here on unit conversions. Uh, so after we take a look at this video, we are going to come into class and we're going to have some problems to solve. Okay?
All right, have a good day.